to import payroll journal entries into a QuickBooks file. I'm using QuickBooks Accountant 2012. This will work with QuickBooks Pro 2010, 11, or 12. Um, first, you need to have the file set in uh, an Excel file, which is actually an IF file format. And the IF file format for journal entries these are the header rows, these actually three lines right here. And with the header rows are anything with an starting with an exclamation point. These are the actual transaction lines, and I'm actually posting two transactions. So the first line of the transaction starts with the words or the letters trans. And then the columns dictate the information that is uh, going to be sent to QuickBooks. I like using a journal entry as a blank line to start every journal entry in QuickBooks. And that is the source row. So that way when you post transactions you don't get funny looking information in the general ledger from the source uh, row because the source row QuickBooks will repeat the name that is in the source row if there are not any names uh, in a journal entry. And, and just take it from me, it can look kind of funky. So the best practice is to use a journal entries as the first line and uh, and then leave the name blank. Um, the second thing is that you can see that there are two journal entries that are in here. And so the first transaction are these rows and then the last row of the transaction uh, says end transaction then the first row of the next transaction starts with trans and then the SPL stands for split and then it ends the transaction and they must balance so the amounts are in one column and the first row I don't have of these transactions I don't have any amounts posting they're just a description uh, kind of like a placeholder and then uh, the second lines through the rest of this transaction are the debits are positive and the credits are negative. Same thing, debits positive, credits negative. So what we're doing here is we are posting in this journal entry the net payroll checks individually and then here is the name of each person that is getting or receiving the paycheck so that way you can reconcile them. Uh, and then this is the total net paychecks that is being posted and then this transaction is showing the ACH or EFTPS payments so that are posting to the uh, uh, from the payroll then this entry is merely the uh, payroll the gross payroll that is being posted and we are summarizing it by the different expense accounts so this will be summarized from the payroll report and uh, instead of you typing in the journal entry manually it will by using the if format you can import this and these totals will post to your expense accounts all you need are the totals if you want the detail you can reference the uh, payroll report and this also um, in this instance it can keep uh, at least for the gross payroll the uh, you know some secrecy if you don't want people seeing who's getting paid what um, then the other thing also is if you don't want to see who's getting paid what then you don't need to put the names in here all you need is the check number if you want to maintain uh, you know some privacy in your QuickBooks file then do not enter the names again just post the uh, check numbers so that way you can reconcile the checks that are going through the bank account so again this is the summary uh, entry and debits are positive credits are negative and now what we're going to do is we are going to import these transactions into this payroll or in a QuickBooks file by merely going file utilities import if files then the first journal entry we're importing is that file and I suggest that you name each payroll run by the date so that way you um, make sure you are oops can't import them because they are open so let me close these um, you, and again you uh, it's best to name these files by the date 
because uh, and let's try this again file utilities import if files then we're going with this payroll entry there now I'm going to show you for the profit and loss that before I posted the entry there was nothing here now we can see that there's a journal or these amounts are posted and you can see that it came from the journal entry and this equals what was in the Excel file or the if file which we imported through Excel and then also let's go to the balance sheet and this shows that we have liabilities to pay now we're going to import the payroll uh, EFTPS payments so it's again file utilities import if files and we're going to import the net paychecks and now you can see the balance sheet is showing the only liability is a 401k plan uh, because we in that EFTPS file the second file we paid the payroll liabilities and then we go to the profit and loss and because that was just balance sheet accounts that were impacted on that entry nothing is happening on the P&L now I'm going to import another file for the end of the month just to show you what happens and we're going to import the sample for the 31st and now you can see that these amounts are showing both payrolls and it's also in the memo it's always good to show the payroll run date so this one's 815 and 831 so that way you can see if you are missing anything and it gives you appropriate data in your uh, general ledger and now we see that we've got liabilities are payable here by the end of the month now I'm going to import the payments for the net paychecks so here's the net paychecks for the 31st and voila the only thing that's left is a 401k plan because we didn't pay that yet so in the journal entry so uh, the other thing that I wanted to point out is the names are coming in from the journal entries as vendors by default that's how QuickBooks brings them in uh, there are no transactions in the vendor center because they are coming from the uh, journal entries so even if you do a quick report and you went all there is still no transactions that are available from the vendor center which is okay um, what I wanted to show you now is the payroll clearing account this is showing the individual checks for each payroll run so that way you can reconcile your bank through the payroll clearing account uh, the payroll clearing account should reference the individual checks and so the deposit is for the net paychecks that are going to go into the payroll clearing account or be run through the payroll clearing account if you're having direct pay you can post or direct deposits you can post those in here as well so any payments that are going to the employees can be posted here that are going to be hitting your bank account because you want the individual transactions flowing through here to reflect uh, exactly what is happening on your bank account um, so that way you can reconcile easily and then you can also see that these are batched on the 15th this has a net the deposit or the, the, actually the, this is showing deposits uh, are coming in as the individual checks and the payment is the one check and that is because if we go over here um, to the operating account you're going to see the way the money was funded to the payroll account is here's the net check here's the EFTPS and here's the EFTPS to the state here's the net payroll here's the EFTPS federal and here's the EFTPS state